So I'm Mara Phillips, and I'm the project coordinator of the ACT Drug-Free Community Coalition, and we serve Angster and Dearborn Heights. And I'm Addison Fox. I'm the communications specialist for the ACT Drug-Free Community Coalition. Um, we saw in our um, school district that we serve, in the Westwood School District, um, that our that youth rates of tobacco use were pretty high. Um, so we put out our pre and post surveys um, during our Botvin Life Skills program, and we kind of saw that um, the tobacco rates were higher than a lot of the other um, things that we were asking about and testing for. Uh, so then we decided to challenge um, students in that school district to have a nicotine free spring break. Um, and we kind of approached it as, you know, try and quit over spring break, try and cut back, um, try and reduce use. Or if, you know, if people weren't using tobacco at all, they could make a pledge to um, continue to not use tobacco or to never start. Um, and we saw that that attitude towards it. So that attitude of like, hey, you know, cut back or try and quit or even just try and quit over the course of spring break um, made the challenge accessible. Um, so it wasn't that we were asking kids to, you know, um, quit cold turkey or shaming them because it's, you know, not right to use tobacco if you're underage. Um, it was more kind of meeting kids where they're at um, in that process. So not only in the process of, you um, you know, it, are they smoking? Are they vaping? Um, and trying to be understanding of that and where they're at, but also meeting them where they're at on TikTok as well. And all we asked was for them to make a video and use our hashtag. And that just made it super easy um, for them to participate. It wasn't a big ask because most of the kids in our target audience already have a TikTok account. So they don't have to, you know, create a new profile. They don't need to um, even really create content that's super difficult we just asked them to they could even just use their school's hashtag on a video that they would already be posting so essentially we just lowered the barrier for entry to make it easy for them to participate and that ended up um, yielding a lot of participation which was great we had uh, 45 submissions total and across the 45 submissions we had um, over 110,000 views. So that's all the videos um, for the challenge combined had. Uh, pretty good reach. So we were really happy about that. So the competition was laid out in that um, there would be an overall school in the district that won, so the school with the most submissions, and then there would be two individual winners. Um, so that meant that people could participate if they weren't within that school district or um, we had somebody who participated who uh, went to a very small school in the district, but she won the individual prize. So um, we had the school won a trophy um, for the most submissions, and that was Robichaud. And then we had two individual winners, one of which was the most creative submission, um, and the other was the most viral submission. And something else we did in kind of outreaching this effort was we went and did presentations in each of the schools. Um, and that's something that we hadn't done before. And that was what got us, I think, the most participation that we've gotten so far in one of these challenges, um, because we were actually meeting with students, talking to them about it. Um, and that's where a lot of that healthy discourse started. So we had students say, you know, why should I quit? Or why is it important for me to stop smoking? Um, why is it useful for me to try, even if I have no intention of stopping at this point? Um, so we were able to talk to them directly and kind of give them that direction and give them the resources they were asking for, and then um, continue that support through the Discord, through, um, you know, everything we were posting throughout the challenge. So the challenge itself lasted through spring break, but in the amount of time we were prepping and outreaching it beforehand, um, we probably did that for a month or a month and a half before we actually launched the challenge. Um, so we got the schools on board, uh, the participating schools, and there was one of the schools that actually provided um, extra credit to some of the students that were participating. So um, again, if you can get any of the coalition sectors on board with the things that you're doing in terms of outreach, um, rewards, that was a huge thing. So um, if, if kids can see this from a lot of different places, so we went into the schools, 
we did the presentation and we hung um, banners and the banners hung in the schools for a couple of weeks before the challenge started. And they could follow a QR code on the banner that would tell them all about the challenge, how to enter the different prizes. Um, so they were seeing it for a couple of weeks before it actually started. And that, that helped a lot because um, there were students that either we didn't meet or weren't there during the presentation that were contributing and um, posting TikToks and submitting videos. So um, they were able to see it from their friends and also just having that competition, um, the individual competition, but also amongst the schools was huge for us um, because people, I mean, kids especially love anything that's competitive. Um, and now uh, the school that won is super excited to have the trophy and put it in the school. So the schools help in this and, and allowing us to come in and talk to the students um, was, was super helpful. And I think that's why we got the participation that we did. Um, most of the videos that we got um, were kind of people posting on the things that they were already posting. Um, but we got, we also got a lot of videos submitted that were um, you know, we had somebody doing kind of like a talking head interview saying, this is why, um, you know, I choose to live drug free. This is why, um, you know, I'm taking this nicotine free spring break challenge. We had students that approached it with um, humor and kind of made jokes about using, you know, popular TikTok sounds about, you know, I'm sick of my mom catching me with my vape and this is a change I want to make. Um, and we had a couple students as well who you know, did something really creative and they drew um, a scene using the TikTok sound that we used um, announcing the challenge initially. So they kind of took the things that we were saying and uh, drew kind of like a storyboard layout for it. Um, so we had a lot of different submissions and I think that's also why we probably got the amount that we did. Um, just because again, we didn't say, you know, you have to submit this video of you um, talking about why you're quitting or you have to submit, um, you know, a written statement or this or that. So people were able to participate in the way that was uh, most comfortable for them. So we did have students that approached it with humor and then came to us later and said, you know, I did quit over spring break and it was really difficult. So thank you for posing that challenge to me because I recognize that, you know, this is something I need to work on. And part of the challenge as well was that they could text um, a number uh, and join our Discord server. So on the Discord server, we provided um, different resources every day. And we also just provided some like helpful encouragement um, to people who may have um, been struggling or possibly started again over spring break um, and wanted to get back into the challenge. So um, we allowed them to enter however they wanted for the most part um, and then gave them resources to continue. Yeah, and our goal is definitely to create a sustainable change in their nicotine use, not just over spring break. Um, so that's part of the reason why we decided to utilize Discord and give them a few other resources to hopefully, you know, have this be the momentum that gets them to start quitting. Because <laughs> we know nicotine can be very difficult to quit, of course. Um, so it was just kind of like, you know, if you've never thought about even trying to quit before, maybe just take this first little step, see what it's like. Um, even if they just tried to cut back their nicotine use, that was also considered, you know, an entry for the challenge. From the challenge, we did learn a bit about how to um, not only outreach different campaigns like this, but also um, how to build them in a way where people are going to participate. So we learned the most from meeting people where they're at, and that's in their readiness to stop using a substance, but also where they are physically. And in this case, that was on TikTok. Um, so we had tried to do different challenges before where we asked a lot more um, of participants. So we said, you know, submit uh, this essay or create this video, create this thing. Um, and we didn't get the partic participation that we got this time um, because that barrier for entry was so low. The format of this challenge allowed us to give the students the skills to either quit on their own later um, or if they did quit to kind of use those skills to um, quit other things whether that be substances unhealthy habits um, again so we focus on skill building um, we focus on information dissemination so we're able to do both of those things um, but also create a 
social media community that maybe we didn't necessarily have before where people are commenting on our TikToks now and sharing them. And um, again, having that healthy discourse, we've had since the challenge, a lot of people comment on some of our videos and say, well, can you send me an article about this? Or can you send me more information about this? So um, we've seen an increase in interest in our social media and the things that we're posting.